Hi guys, today's topic is all about comparing Wi-Fi 5 with Wi-Fi 6. Is it worth the upgrade and what are the differences? Let's find out in today's video. But first, a big shout out to today's sponsor of the day, VR-Wave.store, where you can get all your various different lens prescription adapters for all your VR headsets. Welcome back to VR Essentials, of course, where we talk about the practical uses of virtual reality and everything about the metaverse. Today is the first video of the year, so happy belated new year to you. Big shout out to Asus, who sent me a whole bunch of different Wi-Fi 6 routers. This is the XT6600 from the XT8 family series, and I'm going to compare it to my TP-Link 75. EA, sorry, 7500, which I normally use. Now, today's focus point, whilst we're doing the Wi Fi 5 to Wi Fi 6 testing, will be casting to a television. I really wanted to see whether, you know, does it smoothen out the actual images or does the audio, how does it impact that? Does it impact the graphics in any way? Are there any things here and there that, you know, we can improve on the casting when we upgrade from Wi Fi 5 to Wi Fi 6? And by the way, if you're asking yourself, well, why would I want to cast to television? What is the purpose of this in the first place? Well, there's a couple of reasons. First of all, if you're playing with friends and family at home or in an office, you can actually engage together to try and solve the actual puzzles or the game itself whilst you have those watching and the person in virtual reality. And secondly, it's very useful for product launches or trade shows or corporate events of some kind, or even if you're selling VR and you have a shop, then to have the actual display so people can see what the person in VR is doing, get that curiosity, get that spark going, so they too would want to try VR. Full disclosure that for today's video, I am using the Pico 4. However, if you are an Oculus Quest 2 owner, you most probably will have exactly or very similar results that I had today. The brand of TV will also undoubtedly affect the actual casting as well. The brand of the television that I personally am using is TCL. I bought this because I had a computer screen, TCL, about 15 years ago, and it is still still running. It's actually this one here that you can see on the camera. So I bought a TCL TV because they're super cheap and they last for a long time. Do leave a comment below. Let us know the brand of television that you have and you know whether it is good or not. Because when I was consulting for Pico back in October 2022, during the Malaysia launch, we used Xiaomi. I personally do not recommend the Xiaomi brand because there were definitely some issues there. But it is possible that it's fine with other brands. For example, Samsung. I didn't have any issues with Samsung whatsoever. And also my TCL. Well, you're just going to have to watch and see. So some information about the actual router. So first of all, the Asus router comes with its own app that you can download. And you can actually fully customize your entire setup in your home from the app itself, which is pretty, pretty awesome. The installation was super easy. And the app actually took me through all the various different steps. It really was dummy proof for me. It took literally no time to set everything up. So I was very happy about that. Now, what I like about the app is the flexibility that you can choose all types of different bit rate at a press of a button. So you can go full steam with a max if you're doing, for example, gaming, or you can lower it down and have you know different customized settings. And there are also settings preset here on the app as well for like streaming media or just doing basic admin. Now, during the test, just to let you know that most of the devices I was using that were connected to the actual router were the actual headset, my phone, my computer, and the TV, and that's it. No other devices were connected to the router throughout the test. Now, I have a one gigabyte broadband plan, just to let you know, and I was testing during the recording of the video during a very busy period where there's a lot of neighbors around who are also using their own internet as well. And I have been using the actual Asus routers now, testing them for about a couple months, although I did take a month break when I went to France in between. I'll be using three various apps to do the testing as well. First of all, with Table Tennis, and then we're going to move up to Ragnarok, which requires a little bit more bandwidth, and also after that, After the Fall, which is a full-fledged game multiplayer where you would need a better connection in order to make it work. So let's see how each game fares. And remember to be part of the notification squad after you subscribe, as I will be uploading future videos comparing other Asus routers, as well as doing tests inside of my actual studio, about 10 meters away from the router, with a wall and a door closed in between. So you won't want to miss that. 
Now, when I was using the XT8 series by Asus for the Wi-Fi 6, I must say that I was pleasantly surprised. Now, there's definitely some, I would say, delay both for the sound and the picture as well. Um, I would say a good second, sometimes maybe two, but I think it's more one second delay or so. And also the app that is being used uh, to cast on the TV is downloaded on the smart TV through Google Play, which is developed by Pico, which is the Pico casting app. Now this is only being released, I think it was a couple months ago, so it's still fairly new, but it makes a world of difference, especially when streaming with the Wi-Fi 6 compared to the previous apps which were free, there are always some issues, always breaking things, sound would crackle or the picture would break or it would just freeze or something like that. So I was very pleasantly surprised to say that with the Asus, Everything worked with the Wi-Fi 6 without any issues whatsoever. But there is a reason why I tested it with three different VR games. First of all, 11 Table Tennis doesn't really require a lot of bandwidth because the servers, I don't think there are hundreds or tens or thousands of people playing it at the same time, which means that the app itself would be running pretty well. Now also for the second app that I was using, which was Ragnarok, again, there was no issues there when banging the drums you know, going through the motions and everything, everything was working fine. However, it is a little bit contrasting in terms of the servers that each developer use. This may also impact the casting itself, by the way. And there were some instances, some instances, not all the time, it's very rare, where I did hear some crackling um, through the sound when I was doing Ragnarok compared to 11 table tennis, when I was hitting the ball left and right and center, there was never ever any crackling whatsoever and the picture definitely as you could see in the footage never froze either so definitely they're very very happy but this will also be dependent by the way on the cloud server chosen and developed and also the amount of space that's being used or that's available by the developers as well but let's talk about after the fall because this one is very interesting now do remember that there is audio delay not only visual delay which means i do not encourage you to switch off your audio in your headset regardless if you're using the quest 2 or the pico 4 and do remember also it's not recommended to use uh, Bluetooth headphones because there will equally be some delay there both on the Quest 2 or the Pico 4. Do leave a comment below let us know what Bluetooth headphones you use that work that have no delay so that it will provide some good feedback to the community. However with the Pico 4 there is no headphone jack either so you will need a USB-C to 3.5 mm jack adapter or a pair of headphones that have a USB-C input in order to have perfect clear headphone audio. Now interestingly enough for after the fall when there's a lot of zombies like a big big herd of zombies or when the scene is preloading the next scene what will happen is that especially if you're not wearing headsets or your volume is very low and you have the volume of the TV which is pretty much high and you can really hear it you're going to notice that there's a lot of crackling noises coming from the sound of the television not the sound of the Pico or your VR headset. I have to mention that there's never been any issues regardless of Wi-Fi 5 or Wi-Fi 6 of crackling of sound or any of these issues with my VR headset throughout the entire session that I was casting to a television. And by the way, I'm gonna let you know more about the battery life in just a moment uh, when casting to the TV. So basically, just to let you know that, you know, there seems to be some issues with After the Fall or with apps that are as meaty as After the Fall that require a lot more RAM, let's say, when it's streaming or casting to a television for the sound. The image, though, doesn't seem to cut. The image seems to be fine. The image seems to continue regardless. So if you're doing a casting session at you know a location where you don't really require the sound, then that, most undoubtedly, will be great because it won't break the immersion. However, if you do have the sound that is being casted as well, then it's very possible that for the person in VR, it would definitely break the immersion if you can hear it. Um, but also if you're a spectator, then you know it may not showcase the best of VR if indeed there is this problem. All right, you know what to do. It's time to vote for the next video that you want to watch on the VR Essentials YouTube channel. Simply pick one, two or three and comment in the box below. If you pick three, remember to add your suggestions so that we can consider it. The one with the most likes, that will be the video that you'll get to see. 
Now, interestingly enough, when I'm using the Wi-Fi 5 from TP-Link, as you can see, I mean, it is uncomparable. It's just really bad. Like the quality is seriously bad. Basically what happens all the time, regardless of the app that I'm using, if it's 11 Table Tennis VR or Ragnarok, or for that matter, after the fall, what happens is that basically the screen will just freeze, it will just stop, and also the audio will also crackle or completely like non-existent. It will completely stop as well. So both the audio and the visuals together will basically have issues and become choppy all the time. It's very hard to keep a signal. I even tried to disconnect the app, the casting multiple times to reset it and it's always the same thing. And bear in mind that I did test it for several hours so it always had the same issue. And as I mentioned before, we only have the phone, the computer, the TV and the Pico hooked up to the actual connection of the Wi-Fi 6, sorry, Wi-Fi 5 and Wi-Fi 6. So we don't have too many devices connected to it, although I am playing when it's a weekend and, you know, there are more neighbors around who are using also some of the bandwidth, although it's supposed to be exclusive bandwidth. It is a shared bandwidth too. So, but, you know, at the end of the day, it is, as I said, the comparison is blatant that the Wi-Fi 6 here for me makes a tremendous difference. And do be part of the notification squad after you subscribe because I will upload another test with the Wi-Fi 6 inside of my room 10 meters away from the router with a wall and closing the door in between as well. But with the Wi-Fi 5, I think there's no point doing it because at the end of the day, it would be completely catastrophic. I mean, it just would not work whatsoever. It's that simple. Now, in terms of battery life, this is where things get very, very interesting. In fact, if you are a Quest owner, it would be great for you to leave a comment below. Let the VR Essentials community know. Let the others know how long your Quest 2 will last on a full charge when you're casting to the TV until it depletes of battery completely. Because the Pico 4 is supposed to last two hours and a half. Now, for me, it's really stretching it to get it to that point, to be honest with you. It's never lasted more than two hours, 15, two hours, 20 minutes for me. But maybe it's because, you know, I use very RAM driven kind of apps like after the fall. If you're using maybe just watching a movie or you're playing, you know, 11 table tennis VR or something that requires less RAM, then it is possible that it will last a bit longer. But when I'm casting to the TV, guys, when I'm casting to the TV, <sighs> telling you now, it only lasts after 60 minutes. After 60 minutes, it only had 10% left of battery. That means that 90% of the battery after 60 minutes had been depleted. 90% of the battery had been depleted after 60 minutes. Now that is pretty staggering. That means that it will only last about an hour and 15 or an hour 20 minutes when I'm casting to the TV. So do take note of this. If you're doing events or you're looking to play with your friends and you want to cast the TV at home or you want to cast it at the office, you know, or you're doing a trade show of some kind, then do bear in mind that it's not going to last two hours. So in conclusion, guys, that's what it is. Wi-Fi 5 for me going to Wi-Fi 6 is definitely an upgrade if I was looking to cast the TV for sure. As you could tell with Wi-Fi 5, it was just blocking all the time. It's just really not good whatsoever and it really would not create a fun time if I was to invite some friends to play together in VR and to showcase what they're doing so other people can see their gameplay for sure. In terms of the graphics though, I don't feel like it's really made that much of a difference to be honest with you. If there are some differences, then I'm not quite sure what the differences are. Um, it's possible that some of the loading time in between scenes when they're running from the servers of the actual developers, yes, it can be perceived as a little bit faster, which would make a lot of sense since the servers, since the game would be loading from the cloud server, but not from the actual Pico itself, then that will make a lot of sense. But I have to make, I have to say that it doesn't feel like it's really changed so much, so dramatically that, you know, it makes that much of a huge difference in terms of the audio as well. There's no crackling or on Wi-Fi 5, no Wi-Fi 6. So no differences there, no enhancements or no changes of any kind. Please
please do leave some comments below. Let us know what Wi-Fi 5 or Wi-Fi 4 router you had, or specifically Wi-Fi 5, um, that you know works for you. There's no problem with the casting and no issues of any kind, or whether you also had the same issues with your Wi-Fi 5, despite the brand that you might be using. And do include the brand in the comments so that you know we can share this knowledge with the other members of the VR Essentials community. And likewise, let us know what Wi-Fi 6 router you bought if you didn't buy this one to let us know you know how it works and where you can buy it from and what kind of prices are there you know is it is it comparable to the Asus one or is it much cheaper or much more expensive it'd be great to know I think for the community to be able to benefit from your experience too so guys thank you so much for watching today's video it's been lovely to spend some time with you and also happy belated new year's happy new year also and i do hope that everything that you wish for this year comes true of course and don't forget that you can vote for the video that you want to watch next as well by putting one two or three do scroll back for the details of the different topics that were in today's video of course but guys until next time have a lovely weekend have a lovely evening or a lovely morning wherever you might be and i'll see you in another video very soon See you guys. Take it easy. Bye for now.